first of all. Congratulations, you guys have just tuned into the best podcast in the entire world. Clap it up, man. We are at the Milk Room Podcast. Let's get a big drum roll real quick, please. You know? Hell yeah. <laughs> one, got one of our amazing hosts here, Flip. Everybody give it up and flip that home. Clap it up. All right. Thank you, everybody, for all the clapping. I appreciate it. All right. A round of applause. The audience. And then we have the amazing, the one and only. I just met the man, but the vibes are incredible. I want you guys to give it up for the one and only, Abel. Thank you, thank you. Ooh. And real quick, well, real, real quick, you're pretty cool too. I mean, oh, man, yeah, nah. we got Win Dizzy live in the building. What's up? How's it going? How's it going? Yeah, How's it going? How's it going? How's it going? we're gonna, gonna give a little shout out. Go. <laughs> oh man, I, where, where do we start with you? I'm from Mexico. Uh, I was born in San Diego, but lived in Mexico for like eight years. Then I moved back to San Diego. I was telling you, I moved out when I was like 17. Pretty much like independent after that. And then I moved to LA three and a half years ago pursuing content, you know, modeling, fashion. Dropped out of school for that, so it's been great, you know, doing my thing. So I was born in San Diego, but then I, when I was like two years old, my family moved to Mexico. I pretty much was raised in Mexico for like eight years of my childhood. And then we moved, my, my whole family moved to uh, San Diego. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's crazy because a lot of people don't realize that like San Diego is obviously a uh, border with Mexico and the city right next to it is Tijuana. At the time, I didn't really like, think about it too much because obviously I'm not the one driving and like, doing everything. It's, it's like my parents. Dude, like crossing the border, um, there's this two passes, bro. It's regular passport or Sentry Lane passport, which Sentry Lane is like the, the fast pass, you know? Because if you don't have that, bro, like you'll be in the borderline for like two, three hours. It's insane. I did that shit, bro, for years, years, years every day to get to school like uh 7 8 7 30 you know but when well, you went to school in mexico i went to school in mexico but then my parents transition from getting a house to the u.s was to first get us in school enrolled in the u.s but i was still living in mexico Ooh. yeah so it's crazy so i would wake up <laughs> oh, we wake up so early yeah cross the border and then just they would drop us off at school like at 7 7 30 um we did that for like about a year and then we moved to the u.s and um, I, I, we had a house for about like two years. Yeah. But then my parents got divorced. Some uh, some divorces are like more mature than others. I feel like my parents just didn't like deal with the situation as like, you know, they should have. But also like, hey, I can't really judge them because, you know, I haven't been in that position. I'm gonna feel like hopefully it's like once you see it happen, you're like, okay, that's something I'm gonna try to like do the opposite, whatever, yeah. personality traits that you don't even notice because it's kind of subconscious but i feel like you know shit happens in life and you kind of it makes you who you are you know and like it's up to you to like make the choice whether you want to become a better person and grow out of that or kind of just follow a path that's not going to be like you know the healthiest but we out here so so you have that mexican root what do you think that like taught you like living in mexico for the amount of time that you were living there and then coming back here and stuff it's crazy, bro, because obviously life is completely different in Mexico. Like, bro, yeah. it's so crazy. Like, you'll be driving in San Diego and heading to the border. And obviously, San Diego is kind of like, just like a pretty vibe, California, right. you know. And then you cross the border, bro. It's completely different. It's like you cross wow. to another world. That's wild. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, it's crazy, bro, because like growing up in, in Mexico, like obviously, like when I was growing up, my family wasn't that wealthy. My dad, my dad was a workaholic, bro. He's an amazing, like, uh, parent. But he grew to, you know, he worked hard to get to the place that he, you know, he brought us to to buy a house in, in the u.s and take us to the u.s he wanted like a good uh, really good life for us but growing up like i didn't i didn't really notice because like i don't i don't really care you know i was just kind of like enjoying being grateful for like what i had but um looking back i was like oh shit like, i didn't i didn't have much but what i had i just you know appreciated and i was grateful for it but i did notice the switch when i started going to school in the u.s and you know my friend my friends or my friend group were like a little more wealthier and like oh you know this and that or like heading towards like you know teen years they're they get in their car you know like they're going out they're traveling and i'm just like oh shit like y'all so y'all do, do? Yeah, do that yeah 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 that's crazy <laughs> you know and so you grew up in tijuana too yeah okay eight years of my life pretty much yeah that's so yeah. i feel like tijuana and stuff like i've never been but it's just like so cultural and so like it lively from what i hear it's like there's always stuff going on absolutely and also like for example the drinking age over there is 18 here in the u.s is 21 yeah. obviously but like also mexico bro like you can like 
buy your way into anything. Like, if you have money, you can buy your you way can into bribe, like, yeah. dude, anything. Like, money is power. You, have you seen Narcos or like those yeah, series? Yeah, yeah. It's exactly like that. No cap, bro. Like, you have money, you have power, you can do whatever you want. You can be 12 and go into a club, bro. Just make oh, sure you pay the bouncer. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know what crazy. I'm saying? Yeah, so I, w- I started like going out to clubs with my friends because I also had, a, I always had like an older friend group. So I was like 15 when I started going out, you know, clubbing and, and, and shit out there. But, you know, it's cool. Like, it teaches you a lot of things, bro, a lot of stuff. Also, you can't really mess with the wrong people out there, bro. You don't you don't know who you're messing with in Mexico, bro. But also, I feel like growing up in Mexico was just, like, amazing because of the cultural aspect, you know? Like, I'm glad I'm, like, in, in touch with my roots. And, I mean, I, I learned Spanish, like, perfectly fine. You know, that was my first language. And also, going to school there, like, taught me a lot of things. So when I moved to the U.S., I had I knew, like, basic words in, in English, but, like, I didn't know how to communicate or speak English at all. But I was so young that it's, like, one of those things that, like, you don't really give a fuck. You kind of just like learn it because you have to. So I feel like as a young kid, I've always wanted to do something like different, like outside the box or something that kind of just like crosses or go, goes against like, you know, the grain. Um, so I was, I was always an athlete. I, I did track and field for like six years. so. I remember I was like, what do I want to do, right? Like everyone was in high school, like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this. I was like, I don't have any fucking clue what I want to do with my life. So I was like, I guess I'm passionate about like health and wellness and helping people. Um, so I was like, I can be a personal trainer. So I was going to school for kinesiology. That's pretty much the study of the movement of the muscles. It involves massage therapy, acupuncture, you know, personal training, all those things. So I was going to school for it. And yes, although I enjoyed very much learning about you know, nutrition, the body, you know, how it works, anatomy, physiology. I was like, I was already working as a personal trainer because I had so much knowledge based on like, uh, like all the years of that I did for track and field and soccer and all that stuff. So I was like, I don't see myself being a personal trainer for five years, much less 10 years for me to go to school for four years, have a degree and be in debt. You know what I'm saying? So at that point I was already, I started posting on Instagram, bro. And Soon after that, I started like shooting and going, you know, on little trips with my friends and take a camera and shoot pictures and stuff like that. Soon, soon enough, I got hit up at a modeling agency in San Diego. So I was like, oh shit, like I can model, like that's fire, you know. I was still enrolled in school and soon after that, I met this guy with a couple of my friends that had like the same like kind of like vision and like just like mindset and goals, which is pretty cool. Cause we kind of just like, when you have that group of people, you all just feed off each other's energy, you know, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, I've always thought that it's the, it's better to have a team than to be alone, you know? Yeah. The right team, though. Yeah, 100%. The right team is key. No, 100%. Yeah. That's such right a, team is that's, I don't mean to interrupt, but that's such a good point because I feel like so many people out here come come and they almost have this chip on their shoulder and they're like, I'm doing it alone. Like, I don't want anybody in this. And they kind of come yeah. in here, like, not allowing other people to help. Yeah. And, like, that's, I feel like that just is so awesome that you originally started with that mindset. Because Absolutely. It, like, now too being here where it's like everybody's together it's like we see it's like oh people can feed off of each other yeah 100 yeah. percent. it's just all energy so so model should i say um fitness guy there we go the, the, the gemini cook i cook <laughs> too you cook oh, too? Shit, he all right cooks. yeah so he cooks i cook and act clean that's what i'm saying so so if we're on the streets right now right and like let's let's picture the streets we're walking through the streets and like everybody's like a building or like a store your building's pretty stacked up. You got a couple levels to you. you yeah, got so got, how is some. it? How is it out here in the streets for you, man? Like, like how is it? Cause you, you know, these girls. I know they come around, but like, how do you <laughs> maneuver around that? And they're like, you gotta stay focused and stuff. Absolutely, bro. Like, I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned in LA, and it's just like prioritizing. You know, like obviously just being disciplined with everything because obviously discipline means you need to have like pretty much the will to say no to things that are not going to push you to become better or like get to get, get you closer to your goals so parties bro never end Part, especially out here there's work, a party work, every work, fucking work, day work, so work. like if you miss out on one party you're fine bro yeah, <laughs> yeah. as long as you're working and putting in the work and what you're doing yeah when it comes to girls i feel like i i definitely had like my phase where like i just love going out with girls and like meeting new girls and like you know this and that i feel like i've definitely grown out from that because i feel like for example like my host stage uh, now would be talking to a lot of girls, but not hooking up with any of them, you know? But also I feel like bonding and finding like like the right girl to like, you know, connect with is right. way more important. You think you work better in a relationship or out of a relationship? Definitely out of a relationship, bro. Mm, because I feel okay. like I was in a relationship, bro, and she was definitely my favorite out of 
all three and obviously like I've been in different stages of my life in each really so it's, it's obviously gonna be different yeah. but um i met this girl and i was uh, obviously like i was like you know what like this girl's amazing i feel like this is the type of girl that i would want to work with and grow together you know because yeah. i want to see her do good and, not, and she wants to see me do good so like we can just you know have this dynamic and it's gonna you know benefit both of us um but i feel like it, it got to the point where i was you know what like i feel like i'm not there 100 percent because there's just so many things that I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. And if I can give you my 100% right now, then it's just unfair, you know, for, for yeah, both yeah, of us, yeah. but for you as well, obviously. Yeah. No, I've, been, I've been there. I've used that line before. I'm not going to lie, I've used that line before too. It's like, Word. you know, because sometimes, I swear, we all come out here, you know? Like, yeah. we all have moved here. We're, quote, like the transplants, and it's like we all have these big goals. So it's like you can still think somebody is absolutely amazing. Thing, but it's like shit like i'm gonna be really stagnant it comes into my yeah my world where it's like i have these bigger dreams and then like there are things you know you can find people who want to grow with you too yeah but then like sometimes your intuition kind of just comes in there yeah and it's, it's just kind of like uh right person wrong time or just like yeah. also like you can really love someone but like sometimes that's just like unfortunately not enough yeah Facts. yeah and that's okay like you can also love someone from a distance a lot of people Facts. don't realize that too you know everything a lot of people like love to dramatize things too so it's like oh like we didn't work out like fuck mm -hmm. that person it's just like we See, don't need to go there all exactly, the time that's the like, thing like you know um for example for me like we ended up in good terms that's awesome and that's just like i feel like that's the way it should be yeah i feel like sometimes it's also a little bit harder mm -hmm. because since, since y'all are in good terms it's like yeah. fuck like i hate i can hate you yeah. yeah i feel like when you hate that person you're like fuck you and you just <laughs> whole turkey them yeah. and not talk to yeah. them and you kind of yeah. like get over them quicker yeah but i feel like it's a a lot more mature to like go about yeah. it the other way yeah. and you know maybe a little bit harder but like, you know it's definitely it takes a lot more uh like a bigger person to like you know end things and not, not know yeah. yeah i was actually dating this one girl it was like during like when i was like the whole draft sequence like Ooh. oh bro. lots oh. of energy it was like yeah no it was that's like, level dropping bro it was <laughs> bro, it was crazy so like it was like my senior year in college like i was dating her and like i had so much going on because i was doing track and i was acting and then i was doing Damn. football Shit, so i was doing bro. so much stuff yeah and then you know what i'm saying i'm trying to juggle and still had time for too. a girl Bro, it was crazy. That's, that's ridiculous. And my my thing to me is like I don't give up, especially like on mm -hmm. love or like relationship. I just don't yeah. like to do that. Like I, I like yeah, you seem like a lover boy, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like a lover boy, but like I know my joy. Like I don't be like falling all the time. I've, I've, like, I've, yeah. I've got Win Dizzy's song stuck in my head now. Which one? Like, oh, the, like, the anniversary. I, I, I gave you my sweatshirt. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I gotta show you that song. It's hard, man. It's, a, it's, it's an a anti relationship song. It's a bob. Hey. Yeah, but uh, bro, the anthem now. Hey, respect you. Play in the background yeah. we edit this. But um yeah, bro, I was dating her up to the point and like so like you could imagine like the NFL draft is like a dream is like oh, since I was Dude, a kid, like yeah. a goal. So like the draft day is coming up and like I'm waiting by my phone. Like my mom is like home waiting. I had this guy that was like working in my eight, like everything's like waiting. And like um she just wasn't there for me, like in that moment. Yo. And it's it's, it's crazy. And like especially like when I didn't get the call, like on draft day, like because I ended up um, training with them. And I ended up actually getting hurt, unfortunately. But I had to train with a couple of teams. But I didn't get the call back, the initial call back that I was waiting for. And, uh, yeah, she just wasn't there. And I think at that moment, I started realizing, like, damn, bro. Like, yeah. like she's not filling up my cup the kind of way I needed it to. And, like, but I love, like, just doing stuff for people. Like, I care yeah. about people a lot. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I found myself keep trying to, like, I was draining myself out, trying to do that like, same thing. Like, mm -hmm. trying to do all these different things. And then they got to the point where I remember I sat her down probably like a month after that. Um, Cause it was like a lot of shit building up. And I was just like, yo, I can't like, I think you need like a best friend or like somebody, like a friend more than like a boyfriend right now. Cause I don't think you know how to like really give love in this sense. Yeah. And it was hard. It was so hard for me, but it's crazy because um, after we kind of like broke up and like solidified, I was hurt. And literally like a month later, my life started taking off. Like it was just things yeah. that were just like waiting. Like God was just like 
Like there's like some <laughs> stuff that's holding you right now. But Always, bro. It's wild, but yeah, yeah, that's just crazy, bro. I was actually listening to this uh, podcast on the way over here today, and what was wild is like what they're saying too is like, say you you do come from this place of like I have so much love to give. Like you're just that, and that's your personality. It's like you're a lover, whatever it is. Like you just want to give people peace and love. And a lot of people who don't know how to find that, and a lot of people who just don't know that, like maybe they unfortunately grew up in a household that like they just were never shown love and holy shit when you take that back like you leveling up to that extreme it's just like yeah. wild when that happens it's a wake-up call it's facts yeah it's just poured back into yourself you're yeah. like i'm good self-love respectfully self-love clap it up like snap it up for self-love snap it up, snap for self-love. It up for we're, self-love. We're, we're, we're <laughs> so besides fitness modeling maybe acting what, what are some other interests that you have that people probably wouldn't even know off rip dude definitely acting bro like i feel Fine. like there's like so many things that i i want to do um for sure acting is like top uh top notch right there bro like yeah. i want to i want to do like crazy campaigns for fashion too like for oh. modeling mm. um maybe a clothing brand you know oh mm-hmm. music bro i love music you're dog. into music i love music oh my bro God. Okay. How do you like? spanish music bro for real? i love obviously i love all types Ooh, of music get him Fire. on get him on uh yeah i make so, music too but i'm like i'm just like a big wendy fan so like oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. work. let's work bro let's Wait, you make music too yeah, yeah i make music as well i, I rap know. and i sing Ooh, yeah bro. Fire, bro. we got it yeah what's what do you sing are you singer rapper um singer bro more, singer? more it's, it's like r&b and r&b trap so like gotcha. you know you can Same. throw that like, vocal scan in there and kind of throw like a little trap verse Same. but i just love music bro i love music i love singing and like i feel like it's just um it's something that i would definitely want to like pursue and like gotcha. explore more because i feel like i feel like i'm a very creative person and sometimes my like my anxiety comes from me wanting to do so many things bro yeah fashion modeling um content creation oh shit uh like building a brand mm-hmm. fucking let me cop in the studio like there's so many things i want to do but obviously i've i've learned that you know you gotta grow and focus on one thing first and then go on to the other and go into the other because yeah you, you need to have uh you know a solid foundation, foundation yeah. otherwise you yeah. know it's you know it's like a building that's not straight and it's gonna fucking that's crumble down yeah. but definitely music bro acting for sure like it's just you know entertainment as a whole like i'm really passionate like about that. it yeah. what's your favorite tattoo that you have um shit bro i like the made in mexico one thank you that one's cool I, damn i didn't even see that <laughs> I, I was i was my friend yesterday um i'll tell you my favorite one right now yeah and she was like i really like that too tattoo and i was like i got it because in mexico like most products ha- say like made in mexico mm-hmm. and i was like you know i think i'm a, I'm, I'm a decent looking guy so i feel like yeah. if i get like made in mexico it's kind of cheesy but it's like yeah. cool you know to like stamp myself yeah also mexican so i was like okay it's kind of like funny that's i feel fire. like i'm also like a really like goofy guy yeah so, like, it fits my personality you know that's uh, favorite tattoo bro I have a couple bro like i love this one it's obviously like my yeah. intuition number bro like how you were saying right now, like yeah. i was like oh nine you were like oh we'll give you 11 seconds i was like yo like you know that's wild yeah that's um so crazy. i have a butterfly on my neck nice. um i love that tattoo because i feel like that's it's right. like life like when you see a butterfly it's colorful it's like vibrant it's positive it's like yeah. it's flying so like, that's what i picture you know yeah um but crazy story um i got it because um, so my my grandmother passed away like two years ago, right? Oh, sorry to hear that. Thank you, brother. It's okay. And um, she was living in Mexico with my mom, and I, I remember I was in the point where I was moving to LA, and I was obviously so busy, bro. I had two jobs because obviously I wasn't making money from social media yet, yeah. but I was also like hustling, making my YouTube videos, editing on my free time, all these things. So I remember I hadn't seen my mom and my grandma over like five months. Mm. So I went to go see them. And um, I got there a Saturday and I spent the night Sunday. And Sunday morning I was uh, getting ready to leave cross board and head back to LA. And um, at this point my grandmother was already like, you know, she was old bro and she couldn't do anything by herself. She needed supervision. Yeah. So like my mom dude, like obviously single mother now, she was working, busy, like she had obviously things to do. And sometimes like my mom, my grandmother would be like, oh, I wanna go, I wanna go. But and my mom was like, I can't take you. Like I can't take you. Yeah. And it's just like, when I saw her, bro, like she was just like depressed, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just it gets to a point that life is not like that. Shit hurts, yeah. It, yeah, it, it hurts, but like, you can't do much. Yeah. Um. So I remember I was saying bye, bro. I was saying bye to my grandmother in Mexico, right? And um, I was like, bye, grandma. Like, te veo pronto. I'll see you soon. Yeah. And I give her a kiss, and she goes like, she goes, she looks me in the eyes, bro, and she goes, I'll see you soon, but until then, take care of yourself, okay? Fuck. And, then I, and when she says that, a butterfly flies right in between us bro you're lying. flies right in between us 
and like it hit me right there i was like what i was like oh shit i don't know what the meaning of this is yeah but yeah, i'm yeah. just gonna soak up the moment you know yeah so i said bye i drove up to la oh. dude i got to la three hours later i get a call from my mom she's sobbing bro she had passed away that same day it's so and i hadn't seen my grandmother in five months bro i was like i was just so yeah. blessed and grateful that i got to see yeah. her one last time but i was just like speechless bro i was like oh, what the fuck like how does that happen you know like wild so i didn't mean to cut you off but the stories i did hear about butterflies is that they're supposed to be like when somebody's passing mm -hmm. like they're supposed to be like somebody's like spirit or something like that that's just coming yes. around to cover you and stuff yes, like I've that that's in yeah. movies too it's very symbolic that's crazy yeah bro it was that's crazy that's so it's wow like eerie too in a great way i mean that is because you know i guess the caterpillar to butterfly transitional story so it's like she was about to make a transition and i think like maybe the butterfly was like i'm gonna be okay yeah you know it's like we don't know what's on the other side of the cocoon exactly, thing exactly. but oh that's so beautiful like, i know i was oh. and also like i i didn't i didn't like grieve like yeah. that because i just knew that she was good you know yeah and also seeing the, seeing her seeing her the way she was feeling yeah. she wasn't happy yeah. yeah so like i knew that she wanted that you know yeah. like she was just ready and it yeah. just like it actually made me happy for her yeah. yeah so it was nice it was a crazy experience wow yeah. bro damn well i have a question too because i know that like we haven't really talked about it but i mean you're pretty popping on tiktok and like right. i want to know what it's like too is it like was it that mindset where it's like listen i know that i'm gonna get to this level or was it more like i love creating content let's see what happens and more with that consistency thing or were you like no i'm shooting for the moon and let's fucking run it uh honestly like um when i started tiktok it was like two years ago and it was like honestly like still like kind of mm -hmm. like a new like new right, concept, right. new thing uh, before I started TikTok, I was living in a fraternity because I had just moved to LA. Yeah. Um, I was working two jobs uh, back to back, and on my free time, I would film YouTube videos and then edit them. Right. So I was I was you're, on my yeah, grind. You're on I had my it. schedule. Yeah. I didn't have time to do anything else because the little time that I had free mm -hmm. was to fucking grind on what I wanted to do. Exactly. Yeah. So, anyways, bro, it got to a point where I broke up with my ex. Like yeah. You were saying, and my ex, bro, I remember like. I wanted to like shoot she was like a really pretty girl so i was like i wanted to shoot content with her and stuff like that right um and she was like oh like don't do that that's cringy like don't be doing that stuff you know mm. here, here, this and that and i was like i remember like yeah. obviously like it doesn't feel good to hear that from someone that you love and care yeah. about obviously you want yeah. their full support right um but i was at that point in my life where like i was doing so much on my own that i didn't i didn't feel discouraged or unmotivated by hearing some like that from someone because right. i was like i don't need to hear anything reassurance from anyone yeah i got that myself yeah. you know so anyways i started tiktok brand new account and now I, I told myself i had my my diary my journal everything right um and i was like i'm gonna post three videos a day for a month yeah and nice. see how it works out and I'm a very analytical person, so I'll see yeah. like uh, I'll, I'll look at the algorithm. I'll mm -hmm. see what's doing good, what's not doing good. Yeah. Um. Why does it do good? Why does it get yeah. engagement? What are the comments saying? You know, mm -hmm. I would look at all those things and I'll be like, okay, there's a formula. Yeah. So if you follow the formula, yeah. Why? Why is it not? Why wouldn't work? it work exactly? Um. Especially if you follow consistency, you know, I feel yeah. like consistency that never fails. You know. Yeah. So, um, throughout that month, I started posting videos three times a day yeah. three times there a day boom 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 maybe one day here and there i would post two but i was you know what like it's fine i'm still posting as long as i keep posting yeah, yeah. i'll do good by the end of the month i want to say like week three close to week four um i posted this uh tiktok bro and it went like ridiculously viral yeah and dude after that video it got like over 140 million views yeah like yeah, it was yeah. ridiculous bro like People from back home were like, what crazy. the fuck? Yeah. People from across the world were like, what the fuck? Because yeah. the video went crazy viral. Yeah. Um, I gained a million followers within like five days, bro. Yeah. And after, from that point on, bro, I was able... Oh, actually, it's funny because um, I got fired from both of my jobs. And this, this is a really mm -hmm. crucial point in my life. Yeah. yeah. Because I... I'm a problem solver, bro. Like, if there's yeah. something going on, how do I solve it? I never get stuck in like, fuck, I have an issue, yeah, I have yeah. a problem. Like, no, like, I like to have the mindset where like, there's an issue, great, what's the solution? Right, you know? right, right. Instead of getting stuck and dwelling on the fucking issue. That's just yeah. like not the energy to carry, you know, with any situation. So I got fired, bro. And I remember like my first thought was, okay, go to the first 10 restaurants around the block and apply for all of them. Right. You're gonna get one job. That's that was always yeah. my mindset, you know, right. when I was uh, working and, and, and getting my money. 
But at this point, bro, I was like, okay, I've worked so hard to build and have these tools and resources. I'm looking at what I have. I have a YouTube platform that has 40K subscribers. I have a TikTok account that has a million. Yeah. I have a, a Instagram that has like, uh, maybe I had like 40K back then. And I was like, what can I do with this? You know what I'm saying? So at that point, I was like, my intuition was telling me, this is the point where you don't go back to mm -hmm. your <clears throat> first reaction, which is Facts. looking for a job. Mm -hmm and pursue it double what down on what you got yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. so i was like you know what i was like, it took me dude it took me like a good week to like get the answer because it's yeah. all, it was also hard for me to like mm -hmm. fuck like, it's the unknown you know it's yeah. like uncomfortable mm -hmm. it's scary but hey nothing better comes out of that than just growth incredible and you know it's just up from there bro that's so incredible after there bro like i started you know like making money and meeting people going out traveling yeah. and it was just like fuck like you know bless that was an amazing question by the way yeah yeah, yeah just like because i know that there's so many people too like they come out here and they're like oh, i want to do that but then i think the the part where you're talking about where people are like oh that's cringy or whatever it is it's yeah. like it's that whole thing of like who cares like absolutely like if you're like, what do we all have such short attention spans now it's like yeah. if i see something that i'm like if i were to even have that thought which now too like i'm i'm blessed i've gotten to this mindset where it's like not a lot of stuff is like cringy or, i'm just like feeling like love for people you know so yeah. but if i see that and i have that opinion you know in like two hours i've already forgotten <laughs> that opinion yeah no no one it's cares like, no no one no <laughs> one cares about what like how you feel and what you're doing it's just like so why would you care yeah you know? and people yeah. get so they you know they like want to be these influencers they want to be like famous on tiktok whatever it is and they just get stuck i think in that mindset of, like i'm so worried about what other people are going to think of me absolutely and you have to just kind of like almost be delusionally confident if it's like i mean if it's bothering you know like you just have to be like i don't care and just like maybe eventually that starts to get into your mind yeah. where it's like i actually don't care anymore yeah 100 percent. yeah so i was curious, i literally was like, just told my friend this like literally like it probably was like a few hours ago i was like we've been cringy all year yeah that cringy shit, cringy for life yeah bro because the cringy shit is like like it's like people that's getting people out of their comfort zones and like mm -hmm. when you go so i was doing tiktok i didn't think i was gonna like so i was rapping on tiktok right and like i had a video that kind of blew up like overnight and then like things started happening fast but then like i had stopped a little bit because i was like bro what the fuck like, it was weird for me to like kind of like open up like that because i used to be behind the helmet yeah and then like now i'm just going crazy yeah. receiving all this feedback all the comments yeah and shit. yeah but yeah, you see the good and the bad exactly so then i had slowed down but i'm getting back on it now but um um people would tell me like oh that's that's cringy and like they always downplay tiktok like and all the other shit like that and like it's like you can't let kind of you can't let people tell you how to live your, like your life it's cringy until they come knocking asking exactly for and they come knocking asking for shit and like <laughs> like that cringy shit is maybe that's some new thing that you want to try in your life and it's like this is the lane that you see your life going yeah. the people around you might not see it because they, they was never built like that you know yeah. what I mean? respectfully so yeah. that's crazy that that um yeah, it's crazy that happens, and the applause to you that you kept pushing through that thank shit. Thank you, bro. Thank you. I love this button. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's so fire. It's like iCarly. Yeah. Do you you know wanna, yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, one last thing about that thought, because, again, I just heard this, and it's speaking volumes for what's happening right now. It's like many are called, but not all receive. So yeah. it's like a lot of us have these big dreams, but it's like, when are you going to be the one that sits and actually receives Absolutely. the gift yeah so yeah. a lot of people are called to the front lines who's gonna actually take the moment yeah or like who's are you are you a spectator or like you know you're actually like yeah you know, in the field yeah and i like how you're just like i'm doing three videos fuck it like mm -hmm. this is going my way yeah you gotta you gotta try shit out you know you can't just hear from other people and like you know yeah. no you have to live through it. you have to experience it you have to test it out yourself yeah. you know like someone can tell you everything you know here and there but like if you don't try yourself you're never gonna know you're never gonna find out well, yeah. is there anything you want to tell the people? I'm trying to find this video. But <laughs> is there anything you want to tell the people back home watching? Anything you want to say before you? What are you working on next? Like, what's coming next for Abel, man? What's coming next, bro? Um, honestly, in the beginning of this year, I obviously made my um, what's it called? Vision board or like uh, vision board and goals uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, like my right. resolutions and stuff like that right. goals. Um, a lot of growth, man. Like you know, you can you can you can never stop growing. There's always room for more, bro. Yeah. Mentally, physically, spiritually, you know? So I feel like um, in between everything, you know, like my goals and what I'm working on and what I'm doing, it's always important to keep a balance, you know? Yeah. Balance is the most important thing in life because if you don't have a balance, you're going to fall off, yeah. you know? So 
um just keep growing man staying healthy you know surround yeah. myself with good people keep working on, on on my projects on my thing you know and you know just be a, a, a human to the world yeah. you know Real get good yeah. I, I love that thank you brother i have one last question because yes. i know we're getting that hour mark which like you know, again. Oh my, so quick. I know. Yeah, I was about. To, by, bro. I was about to say. Put, conversation. That's good. Conversation. Put the Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius together. Right. I know, right? Exactly. Air sun. <laughs> Air sun's in the building. Right? Endless. But I have one last question for you, yeah. um, and I want to know where do you see yourself in the next three to five years? Mm. In the next three to five years, I see myself um, paying off my house. Nice. Traveling the world um, for fashion, mm. for modeling, um, acting. And for sure, for sure, uh, working more towards music, whether it's just for myself yeah. and whoever wants to enjoy it with me, you know? Yeah. I feel like my, for example, like music, it's like, honestly, everything that I do, mm-hmm. I do it for myself because I enjoy it, because I love it. And whoever likes, mm-hmm. whoever wants to enjoy it with me yeah. and share that with me, I'll gladly, you know, open yeah. it up to them as well. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah, I mean, happy, yeah. successful you know yeah all the- taking care of my family for sure yeah oh, buy a little home in san diego there you go love it all right so next time you see abel he's gonna be on some runways he's gonna oh, yeah. have an Fair. album uh, album we gonna have a spanish song yeah. together yes, we already sir. have the matching I know, phone cases i, I know dude you know that's crazy that's bro. wild that's crazy bro. That's i would so like wild. a spanish song too please oh. Oh. Let's, go. let's go let's go three ways let's do it yeah let's do it well this is the biggest podcast and the best podcast you have ever tuned into today. I guarantee ever. it's the best one you listen to today. Yeah. We got Abel. We got Flip. Boy, one Yes. Easy. Thank you so we much, guys, for having me. Bro. Thank Real you for bro. coming in. Yeah. Love, love. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. We out of here. Ah, we out. Peace. Bye.